Okay. Can you can everyone hear me at the back? Yeah. Okay. Great. So firstly to introduce myself, I'm Carrie Duckworth and I'm the program director for the MRES in Biomedical Sciences and Translational Medicine. So we're largely based in the Institute of Translational Medicine. And um, I can only briefly say a few pieces about the program in eight minutes. So if you feel a need to uh, ask more questions, then feel free to drop me an email. So I'm going to say that right at the start of the talk. So why is our MRES particularly exciting? Well, we offer an extensive component of research within the MRES program. So this actually consists of 36 weeks uh, essentially in the lab. So that's three 10 week projects plus two weeks for each project to write that up. Alongside the research component of the MRES, we also run a talk component of the MRES program. So you will attend lectures on one day a week. It's on a Wednesday afternoon currently. Um, and that is delivered by lecturers within the Institute of Translational Medicine on their current research themes. So with the two components of this MRES program, we provide you with a significant set of transferable skills to take into your um, uh, jobs following the completion of the MRES program. So this MRES program is particularly attractive because it's very structured and timetabled and it allows us to give you a guaranteed end date. So along with the other MRES programs that have been discussed, or the master's programs that we've discussed previously, we have a September to September uh, program structure. So the MRES is also particularly appealing to people as having a postgraduate research degree is very useful for future careers to put on your CV. And a very large proportion of our NRES students go on to do a PhD after, afterwards. It's around about 50%, depending on the year. A lot of those PhDs are actually conducted within our institute as well, because we do offer PhDs to current NRES students that aren't advertised externally. So um, there are quite a lot of NRES students that are actually now currently PhD students within the institute. So we're actually the biggest MRES program within the faculty. We, we currently have around about 91 students this year. Um, we had 67 students last year and 97 students the, the year before. The majority of our MRES students take a standalone MRES. So they do the MRES and then go off and, and uh, into industry. But there is a proportion of students that actually start on a one plus three PhD program. So they will do an MRES in their first year and then go on to do a PhD, largely in the lab of one of their rotation projects during the MRES. And around about 10 to 20% of our students are actually intercalating uh, students. So there is a slightly different application process for them, but if um, you, you're aware of anyone that's interested, they can contact us for an information booklet about applying. So what happens when you apply for our MS uh, degree? Well, we ask you to indicate your areas of research interest, and then we allow you to apply to a particular strand. So I'm not going to read these all off here, but we go from the likes of biology of cancer and physiology through to strands that are aligned with biostatistics and biomedical imaging. So essentially, you choose a subject that interests you, we aligned you with a strand convener who will then discuss with you about where to place you within the um, institute, so which research labs are appropriate to the subjects of your interest. So um, a large number of our MRES students have gone on to actually produce publications, which is quite exciting. Um, these are a little bit out of date. There's a lot of publications that have come out uh, authored by MRES students. Here's a couple of examples. So they produce reviews, and here's an example at the bottom of a research article where the first author was an MRES student, and it's in quite a decent journal as well. So as for the content of the MRES program, you will conduct three laboratory research projects, and we call these rotation projects. And that's largely because we're quite flexible. So you can conduct one project in, uh, in one lab and then rotate to another lab and do three independent projects with three independent supervisors. 
or you can stay in the same lab for the whole three rotations, or, or you can do two in one lab and one somewhere else. So this, this is largely student dependent, and um, we've got the flexibility to accommodate your wishes along those lines. So you'll be asked to do a 10 week uh, research project and then two weeks to write that project up. And then you will be asked to conduct either a poster or an oral presentation at the end of each of those projects. And we're particularly keen on making the rotation projects progressive in that you'll do different uh, lab based skills in each one. So you, you couldn't do Western blots for three rotations, for instance. So as I mentioned previously, we have a taught component of the course that runs in parallel with the research based component. And this is delivered by research active lecturers within the Institute of Translational Medicine. That covers a very wide range of subjects. And we also deliver science skills sessions <coughs> delivered by the same lecturers. We have strand specific activities and also journal clubs that are aligned with the strands of your interest. We also have a transferable skills module. So on this, a particular selling point of program is that you have the option to undertake a home office licensee course. So if you pass this component, you have a certificate that allows you to apply for an animal license for the home office. And this is quite attractive on your CV to um, future PhD supervisors, as you do not then need to do the course. You also have the opportunity to partake in debates and an IP and commercialization workshop, which is uh, conducted by an external company and also uh, undertake activities such as grant writing because there are different skills involved in writing grants compared to writing research reports. So how much does this all cost? So in line with David's uh, MRES, we have the same fee structure. So currently it's £4,260 per year for a UK or EU student or up to £19,850 for international students. There's a £3,000 research support fee, and this goes directly to your supervisor to pay for the costs of your research. Within the Institute of Translational Medicine, we also offer, and it was 20 bursaries this year, that could change next year, but the Institute offered uh, these bursaries up to £2,000 for stu students which were available via open competition. And we also provide a discount on tuition fees for University of Liverpool graduates. So um, as you'll all fall into that category, um, I'll explain a little bit more about that. So if you obtain a 2-1 or above, um, and you're from the UK or the EU, you'll be entitled to a £1,000 reduction in tuition fees. If, you, an if you're an international student and you've got a first class degree, you're entitled to a reduction of £2,500. And if you've got a 2-1 and you're um, an international student, you'll have a 10% reduction in your fees. So essentially, this is my last slide. And um, just to point out that the entry requirements for this program is a 2-2, uh, a 2-2 and a BSc. Um, if you want to find out more information about what the different strands have to offer uh, or any Im more information about the MRS program, please have a look at the website that's at the bottom here. Um, if you want some human contact, <laughs> please drop Joe an email in the ITM PGR office or myself and we'll be happy to ad address any questions. We have uh, a booklet available which we can send you a PDF or via email and we're also, we also have a stand next week at the um, open evening next Wednesday night. So um, I'm also happy to take questions at the end. Thanks for listening. <laughs>